Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. In this video, we're going to show you how to hook up Hammond and Morgan um, power controllers uh, to your layout. Um, now, I saw a couple of uh, questions on a forum recently, and I realized when I went through my videos, I didn't actually uh, show you guys how to hook one of these things up. So this is going to be a quick video just to show you guys various different uh, H&M controllers that I have and um, how to go about using them and setting them up. So um, these things are, are fairly robust. Uh, they're DC controllers. They're, they're quite old. Um, I was lucky enough uh, that a couple of years ago I saw on eBay some guy was selling one and I said, oh, my dad used to use these. Uh, so it'd be kind of cool to, to pick one up, especially since they were uh, 100 hundred to 112 volt AC input, which means they work here in the United States. Um, it turned out after talking to the guy um, on eBay, he had dozens of these things that were brand new um, in the back of a storeroom in some uh, model shop in Canada that he was uh, liquidating. So um, I basically cut him a deal and I bought every single one that he had. Um, so I have a lot of these and they're all brand spanking new. Um, I have picked up a few uh, ones on eBay that were secondhand as well, uh, just to have spares and, and so on. But these things are fantastic controllers. Um, I particularly like the uh, the control on here is pretty smooth and uh, another feature you have is this resistance so if you've got some of these motors that are a little bit uh, wound in such a way that if you apply a little power they just take off at high speed uh, some of the newer locos especially the railroad ones will do that um, you can knock it on high resistance and basically what you're doing is you're just adding resistance between the controller and the, and the track uh, so you basically have to have an increased uh, amount of voltage in order to um, get the train to move uh, faster. Uh, now they also have this thing called half wave. Uh, you basically, this is not uh, something you want to turn on and off. Uh, you just leave it on full wave. Uh, it was a feature for I think O-Gage or something like that and it's you know, a good way to burn up a motor. So you don't want to uh, to use that. Um, now these controllers uh, are pretty pretty straightforward. Um, they do have AC input sockets on the side, so here you can see it has a little arrow, it says 6 volt AC socket, and there's uh, two here on the side, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then on the other side, you have a 12 volt DC, and it's wired in the side here. So if I uh, turn the camera just slightly um, over here, you can see I've got a second one. These actually control the main two loops on the new part of the double O rail layout. But see here, you basically have uh, two connectors, and uh, these actually use a thing called a banana clip. Uh, you can shove uh, a wire in there if you've got like single core um, wire. You can probably dump it in there and kind of bend it in such a way it stays on, but it's probably not too safe. And um, these are designed to have these banana clips that you basically put the wire into and then shove into here, and uh, little pins. And you can buy uh, the banana clips from any kind of half decent um, electronics place. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, you just have the input down here. Um, it's you just have the input down here for DC. Um, so if you were controlling, I uh, wanted 12 volt DC for something uh, like lights or something like that, you could use that. Um, so in terms of uh, setting one of these things up, they're they're pretty straightforward. Um, if I hopefully I have enough room to do this uh, with the cables, if I spin it around. Um, see here uh, there are two terminals um, one goes to the knob directly in front of it and the other two go to the knob um, that are in front of that one um, so to wire it up it's really really straightforward um, all you need to do is wire one of these terminals to one rail and one of the terminals to the other rail on track um, so you just simply undo that and you'll expose I'll just do it all the way but you can see there's um I unscrewed the whole way. It's basically just a, uh, a screw thread. So what you want to do, and you don't have to undo it the whole way, um, unless you really want to. But basically, just wrap this around. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to use a, a small screwdriver, uh, but generally you just want to wrap it around like this so you make a loop and touch it up against the metal part at the back. Put the screw back on and just uh, screw it on like so, and then just make sure it makes contact with that like that. So I just realized my hand was in the way for the whole that, so I'll do it again. Um, so you basically, once it's unscrewed uh, the whole way, I'll 
rotate around so you can see it. Basically, you want it looped around like that, and then put it on. Screw it like so, and it's not going anywhere. And since I'm uh, checking my wiring here, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I may not loop these on very well the first time around. And uh, you can just undo it. Uh, Hook it. Just kind of put it into a loop like that. And then just. Oops. Take the whole thing off. I'm trying to do this on camera, it's not as easy. Um, like so. So, like I said, one of these, uh, if I was to follow it through here, um, goes to one rail and the other one goes to the other rail. So, this side controls one track, and this side here controls the other track. So, it's the same deal. Um, with this, and then you just plug that into the mains, and you're good to go. Um, let's put it back in place. Okay. Just want to make sure that you don't have any wiring uh, sticking out, or the cables get fouled by anything. But that's pretty much it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So, uh, one thing you will find is if you do, you, you want to do left-hand operation, right? So you want the train. Uh, going with the signals and stuff on, on the left hand side. So if you uh, apply power to your track and where it says the direction is normal and the train isn't doing left hand running, it's basically you know going the opposite direction, then all you need to do is um, flip around the wires on the back of this uh, to the other terminals and then that way when you do forwards it goes forwards the way you want it to reverse it goes reverse. Um, and that's that's basically it. These things are really robust. Um, they're great for letting little kids mess with them because little kids will love these uh, controls. Um, you know, they're they're easy enough to, to mess with, and you're not going to break it very easily. Um, and it's a fantastic controller. And uh, now there's a couple of other ones that you can get. I actually have a whole bunch of them. All right, just to show you some other controllers uh, that we have. This one's a safety miner. Um, and it's uh, pretty similar uh, to the Duet. Um, you'll notice it only has this half wave, full wave switch. So I just leave it on full and leave it alone. Um, this one outputs, it says on here, uh, one and a half amps at 18 volts. And it's uh, protected by thermal cutouts. Um, one thing with this, uh, you have, again, it tells you the 12 volt DC is control, control, uh, controlled outputs on the back. Um, you've got 12 volt DC. Um, socket on the one on the right hand side and then AC on the left hand side. Now I'm not 100% sure but I'm kind of pretty confident in saying that the AC ones are always uh, upright like this and then the uh, DC ones are lateral like this and of course if I flip it over you will see it's got two screw terminals. Uh, so one of these will go to one rail and this one will go to the other rail and you can control um, one set of tracks with these. Um, I do have some other ones. There's a clipper, um, which is essentially the same thing as a safety miner, only it has the uh, resistance control as well. So you end up having both of these. So the clipper is kind of like two of the, you know, this is duets like two of the clippers basically. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. There's some pretty cool add ons. Uh, there's a video uh, I did a while ago on wiring DC and DCC at the same time. And you'll see in that video the amp meter and, and so on. You can also get unpowered ones of these that are just a control knob. Uh, so I use a Bachman controller as an input for that. And um, it just gives you the same kind of knob that you have for these controllers. Um, that's, I think, pretty much it in terms of the duets. There's not much to them. Um, the screw terminals on the back. Just solder them to the rails and you're good to go. If you don't want to solder them to the rails, but you have one of these uh, Hornby track clip things, uh, you can still use the wire that goes from the Hornby track uh, clip, but instead of the uh, connector that goes in the back of the Hornby controller, just, just cut it off and use the two wires and strip um, 
one to each of the terminals. Um, so if you don't want to solder or anything, you will still want to use the track clip, just cut that wire and uh, plug it in the back of this. All right, so uh, that's it. Like I said, this is a quick video. i uh, show you guys uh, how to set up these uh, H&M controllers. Uh, they don't sell these anymore, obviously. Um, they're made in England. I think there's a guy in the UK um, that does service these and sell them as uh, refurbished. So if I can remember his information, I'll put it in the video or in the description below. And if I don't remember, maybe someone knows it and can put it in the comments. All right, so uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time.